So I've been getting messages that Lou exposed me. Ooh. <laughs> it's always the same thing with these haters. I, I think they could only find two or three things in my whole lifetime, okay? So let's go. I, I must have made 100 videos about this already. The first thing is the Animal Rescue Concert. They keep bringing this up, the haters. This is like their favorite subject, okay? So what happened was, I, I don't remember the year this was. I think it was 2008. Um, we, uh, me and my wife wanted to open a non-kill animal rescue center in Staten Island. They, the, the one that was in our neighborhood closed down It broke our, it broke our hearts because they didn't have the, the funding. So I was doing a lot of Billy Joel tribute shows. I said, you know what? Why don't I do a big concert? You know, I was ambitious. And I said, I'm going to rent out the Staten Island Yankee stadium. It costs $50,000 to rent it out. Now, I signed the contract, but it was it was basically I could get out of it. it the, the contract it, it stipulated that if I couldn't raise enough money, I had the option to cancel because I'm not gonna you know put myself on the line for 50 G's. Anyway, I start you know selling tickets through Ticketmaster. I think you know something like it was fifty dollars a ticket. I'm not exactly sure how much we sold. Maybe two hundred tickets. I don't remember. Maybe it was like something like that. I can't remember, 200, 250. So we didn't raise, obviously, we had, we had to raise more than, you know, the 50,000. We needed to raise like 100,000. And uh, we raised, I don't know what we raised, 10 grand, 15 grand, whatever it was. We didn't raise enough, enough money. And what happened was Ticketmaster refunded all the people's tickets. It was, there was, this was during 2008. It was during the housing crisis. People were losing their homes. It was very, very hard to get people to spend money during that time, as you could probably imagine. So it was no harm, no foul. People got their money back. We canceled the concert, and that was the end of it. People bring this up. You have no idea how much. They bring this up. They bring this up. They bring this up. Then there was another thing, and this is what this jerk off, this guy uh, who was a writer for the uh, Staten Island paper, he found out that I was issued... <clears throat> a cease and desist order. What happened was a long, long time ago, I, I don't remember even when, this is many, many years ago, I was reading the book, The Art of the Deal. I wanted to be like Donald Trump. He was my hero. So I said to myself, I could do this. He could do it. I could do it. My dream in my life, one of my dreams, I have a lot of dreams, but it's always been to own a casino. So I said, you know what? I'm going to attempt my dream and try to own a casino. And what it was, was I put together, you know, my, some family, some friends. We got an option on a property in St. Croix, the Virgin Islands, okay? I couldn't afford, obviously, Atlantic City, Las Vegas. It was billions. But St. Croix, you know, with like 50 million, you could do something really nice. So what we did was we bought 110 acres of oceanfront casino. It was, it was owned for a hotel casino. Okay, the land that we bought, prime, prime real estate. Like it was gorgeous. Oh, you had to see how beautiful the ocean and, and, and this lot was huge. It was 110 acres. So, <clears throat> and it was right in the, the prime area of the Virgin Islands. Um, I contacted a guy that I met through a very big uh, real estate investor who was a friend of mine. Now, this guy was the biggest real estate investor in Florida. Okay, this was like the Donald Trump of Florida. And we had a meeting. I flew out to Florida and I, I showed him everything I wanted to do. He agreed to put up $50 million. He agreed, okay? Uh, but he wanted me to help out a little bit. He was like, look, I'll give you a 25% interest, but just try to get some more investors just in case I, you know, like he, he, he agreed to do it, but he wanted to get a little support. So I started, I started making phone calls. And I called uh, a big real estate investor in Pittsburgh. Okay, it was in Pittsburgh. This Mama Luke, this Stunad, whatever, he didn't like me. He calls up the SEC, okay? And he said, look, some guy named Richie, blah, blah, blah. He's, <laughs> right, Richie Lavoy. He says, calling me up about some kind of casino um, investment. You know, is this registered, blah, blah, blah. So the SEC sent me what's called a cease and desist order because we were not registered as something called a broker-dealer. 
I had no idea what I was doing. I was a young kid. I was so excited. I was making, let me tell you something. I had the time of my life. This guy who was this big real estate developer got me a suite at the Ritz Carlton in, in uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, because San Juan is right by St. Croix. It's about a half an hour away. And he got me a $50,000 marker. The guy loved me. I was gambling. I had a floor, which I had my own pool in my suite, if you can believe this. There was a pool in my room. I was living like a king. I was on those G3 corporate jets. You know, I was living it up, man. We are on boats, yachts. I'm eating friggin' steaks. I'm drinking champagne. I was living like a friggin' millionaire, okay? So what happened was I went out. This was around the time I was like, so now it's starting to come back to me. You know, when I first got married to my, my wife in 2005 or something like that. And um, I don't really remember. I can't remember. It's so many years ago. But the point is, it was around that time. It could have been, it could have been a little later. I'm not sure. But the thing is, um, long story short, we dropped the deal. The The guy just decided I'm going to stick with investing in Miami and Florida. You know, his lawyers talked him out of it. He was like, St. Croix, a lot of people don't go there. It's not a really, you know, good destination for vacations. It's, it's very undeveloped. So he walked away from the deal and we complied with the SEC. I contacted the SEC. I said, we're no longer pursuing the deal. I will not contact anybody else. And that was the end of it. So I got no fine, nothing. I didn't get in any trouble. It was nothing. You know how many times businesses get cease and desist orders? Like hundreds and hundreds of millions of businesses all around the country. <laughs> it's, it's just like sometimes you're doing something where you're not following a certain rule of compliance and they warn you and you comply. That's it. I didn't realize that we had to be registered as a broker dealer. I did not get in any legal trouble whatsoever. I can't remember the year though. So it could have been 2000, between 2005 and 2009. I can't, I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. <laughs> okay. But these are the things that, that they keep bringing up over and over and over again. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh yeah. They bring up things that, cause I was in sales. I was a telemarketer. Sometimes you run into crazy people who don't like you and they post negative things about you. I, I received a call from this guy. I don't like him. He's a piece of garbage or whatever. Again, I never got in any legal trouble, <laughs> no, nothing. It's just, you know, some, we live in a world where nowadays everybody posts things online. You know what I mean? Like you, you have the power to post. If, if somebody either irritates you or aggravates you or upsets you, you have the power to post. So I, somebody, when I was working at City Search, you know, many restaurant owners used to tell me, Oh my God, I'm getting so many negative reviews. They're telling me they saw a rat in my restaurant. There was a bug in their food, a cockroach. <laughs> it's just that unfortunately, if, if someone doesn't like you personally, they have the right to post things online. So I had people who I've called. It could have been various projects. I was doing everything. I was working in sales jobs. Sometimes I, I was promoting my breast cancer awareness events. I had entrepreneurial ideas where I was testing the market. And I would call people. But the bottom line is I never scammed at anybody. I never took money from somebody unless I provided them with some sort of a service or a product. Never in my life. I have never committed a scam. And that's why the SEC let me go scot-free. Because they saw I did not accept any money from nobody. That's it. And that's the bottom line. So whatever Lou is trying to expose me on, Lou, I never been arrested. I don't have a criminal record. Lou, you have a criminal record. You robbed from senior citizens. You stole $73,000 from innocent senior citizens. Lou, you were convicted with fraud. You went to jail. According to court documents, you were tortured in jail and got an early release because you were tortured. Okay, so Lou, stop comparing yourself to me. My record is clean as a baby's butt, and your butt, Lou, is not clean. This video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial planner. I'm an entertainer, and this video is for entertainment purposes only.